Hi, it's Marlon. In the last lesson we had, we talked about the center and its importance. So today we'll be discussing the development rules with the knight, bishop, queen, and rook. And we want to start the game. And for us to start the game right, then we have to do the proper development of pieces. Let's start. So from the start of the game, we don't want to move the knight here on corners. Why? Again, we have to focus in controlling the center from the start of the game while we are developing our pieces. But if we put this knight on h3, for example, it's very far from the center that we are aiming. And this knight is just controlling these two squares. This is what we call, or they're saying, that this is the knight on the rim is deal. So ideally, we want to put the knight here on f3 as yeah, it takes part of the center. So to explain more about this concept, if your knight is in the corner or any corner of the board, you will just have a little space to control. So for example, if the knight is on h8, then you can just go on this, on these two squares. But if your knight is not in the corner, doesn't really have to be in the center. For example, here, knight on c3, it can have eight squares to be controlled. So ideally, we want the knight not to be in the corner. Because if it does, it could just have to. Got it? So knight belongs to the center or knight has to be centralized as much as possible. Let me show you this kind of opening. Uh, this opening is called the four knights game. E4, E5, knight on F3, knight on C6. And here, white decided to play knight on C3 and black play knight on f6. So as you can see, there are four knights being developed in the center. Each one is trying to share some part on the center. So for example, here, a black is like having these four squares on the center control. And white is also trying to control center as well. So this is called the four knights game. Uh, bishop on d5, attacking the knight. So black thing here, knight on d4, trying to capture the bishop. And also trying to attack this knight on f3. So white decided, okay, I'm just going to capture the knight. Knight takes, knight d4, uh, knight d5, takes, and pawn takes. After bishop e7, White castle, black castle, look on e1, and then t5, and then maybe e4, and then d6. Bishop, uh, uh, sorry, b3 pawn. The idea is to develop this bishop. Bishop on g5, bishop on b2, a6, bishop on c4, b6, b4, and, and here black king, bishop on b7. So, what am I trying to explain here? So the knight could be traded early part of the game. And, and this is how some somehow the game continues like this. I'm not sure who played this game, but okay, it's just a continuation. <laughs> Next. Okay, what about this game? Let's see how knights are developed. E4, C5, knight C3, C. Good. Knight c6, good. 
bishop on b5. We have this kind of Sicilian defense. And normally, uh, for what I understood, I mean, in my experience, we just put the bishop back on c5 or even bishop on e4. But here, white is more interested in, in developing her pieces. And she played here knight on f3, offering the bishop on b5 to be captured, then black go for it after knight on b5 and c. Knights for white are active. And after a6, knight on c3, d6, d4, takes, and then queen captures. So opening is almost finished. Knights develop. Bishop can just move here maybe on f4 or even on e3. And white can go for long casting or short casting. And white has the center. After e6, bishop on g5 attacking the queen, queen c7, and white castle. Bishop on d7, rook on d2, e5, and okay, in this moment of the game, tactics are available. Here, white played knight on d5. So, centralizing the knight, attacking the queen. In, in this case, for example, if pawn takes the queen and then white could just simply capture the queen with a double attack. And in this matter, it's not just a simple double attack because it's a checkmate. Amazing. So black um, didn't capture the queen, but instead she tried to move away by playing queen a5. Can you spot what is the crushing move of white? Yes, and congratulations if you find the answer. Here, the answer is queen b4. So queen on b4 is like decoying the queen and trying to remove the defender on this dark square, especially on the c7 square. Because if queen captures, Again, we have knight c7, and this is so much dominating, I mean, so much dominance by the knight on the center. Uh, actually, after queen and b4 on this position, uh, black resigns. Next. Okay, what about the bishop development? So bishop development is something to be attained. If again you move pawns on, as for example here, uh, uh, let's just exclude g3 and b3. For example, if you move these two pawns on the center, and then you can move your bishop out. Compared to knight, the knight could just simply jump on f3 or on c3. There's still a debate here. I mean, with my previous uh, lessons, uh, my student asked me which one should be developed first. Is it the bishop or the knight? And I'm like, yeah, which one first? So in my opinion, we should develop the knight first. But if you have a different mentality and, and philosophy, I mean, uh, you have other concepts, then okay, bishop development is also to be considered first. So here, for example, e4, and now you can just move your bishop next to e5. Okay, knight first. <laughs> I have three and the knight on c6. After bishop on c4, this is what we call the Italian opening. Um, uh, normally, black could just be bishop on c5 or even knight f6 with two knights defense. But here, black, for example, could just play bishop on c5. And if you want to develop this bishop, you can just play d3. Got it? Or here in the game, the main line is c3, preparate, uh, preparation for the d4 break. Black play knight on f6. Good. Continue your development. Now white tries to break on the center. Bishop on d6. And okay. 
Here, I think he could just capture on b4 after pawn takes, um, then bishop on, on b4 check, and then after bishop on d2, there is going to be an exchange, and this is somehow considered, you know, um, continuation of the opening. This is having, uh, this opening is for about 400 years already, so there's a lot, a lot of study and, and experienced players uh try to share what are the ideas to be played especially in this kind of opening but on this game what happened is he didn't capture black i think it's inexperienced and he just played bishop on b6 after capture okay it's down by a pawn knight captures on e4 which is bad move why is it bad move because there is queen on d5 that's why they cannot capture the pawn on e4 on this kind of variation. Uh, here, this is what we call double attack. Attacking f7, checkmate, or losing a knight. If, for example, here he played queen e7, then he lose the knight. And, for example, if he just played knight on g5, trying to defend the f7, there's what we call removing the guard or deflection. Bishop takes g5. And okay, one and that again. So also attacking the queen if it just play f6 and then still checking this so White, it's so much winning after knight takes e4. Poison pawn. So let's try another example. Um, okay, e4, e5. Knight on f3 and knight on c6. Bishop on c4 and bishop on c5. So c3 and knight on f6. Here, what white didn't play d4 immediately. Uh, white tried to complicate the position more by playing knight on g5 with a sim uh, very simple idea of attacking f7. But there's also a rule in the opening that we don't want to move the same piece twice. I have nothing against with the fried lever attack. I mean, with the fried lever players, because they normally play knight on g5. Um, but, okay, at, at some point it's good because you're attacking, but make sure if you move the same piece twice, you have a very, very good idea. Because here, uh, black just castle, and after b3, trying to develop the bishop, h6. There are uh, two variations here. I mean, you can move away, so you just move your knight again. Or you can go for a trick. So the trick here is what happens on the game white played h4. So it's, if black captures the knight on g5, and then h captures g5, attacking the knight, and if the knight goes on h7, you're right. The queen can go on h5. So open file and the bishop is doing this very good job pressuring f7. So for example, here, okay, um, he can do something like bishop takes f2, king takes f2, and then rook e8. So rook e8, now what is the bishop doing? He will not capture, but he will protect and support the queen at that. Queen takes f7 after king h8. Wait, uh, yeah, rook takes h7, king takes h7, and you have the queen h5 check. Amazing. How strong this bishop is if it's on the correct diagonal. Right? Okay, let's have another example here, a very short example. e4, e5, knight of 3 and knight c6. Bishop on b5, and we have the Rui Lopez. Or the Spanish opening. After a6, bishop on e4, knight on f6, and bishop on, uh, oh, sorry, castle, bishop on e7, rook on e1. Uh, the Spanish bishop, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, I call it Spanish bishop, is under attack, just go on bishop b3, and now we have uh, this kind of Rui Lopez and b6, b3, preparing for d4 break as always, castle h3 knight on b8 d4 
And of course, after bishop on g5, bishop on d7, knight bd2, uh, the idea now is like maybe this knight can go like this, and go an out goes on f5. So bishop out, you see bishop is active, bishop is active, this bishop is unfinning, and this bishop could be a very long investment. Bishop development. Make use of your bishop and knight. Okay? What about the rook? Hmm. I also remember, um, my student asked me, can we develop the rook early in the opening? And I'm like, hmm, good question. How can we do it? So, for example, white can play here a4. Hey, move. a4, and then e5. So, white could just develop the rook, right? Rook a3, which will lead into a mistake because, of course, bishop can capture. Knight captures back. So, to answer if we can develop the rook early in the, early in the game, the answer is... Okay, continue. Mm. Okay, here, um, as I said, we cannot develop the root early part of the game, but maybe in the middle game and especially in the end game. And you have to remember that the root belongs to open file and semi open file, which in the early part of the game it's not available. So the idea is that this root should be here or either here. Okay, so those are a long shot development that you can do on your game. So for example, here e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4 takes, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and then d6. Knight on c3, you see, everything is working. Knight f6, pinning, bishop on g5, bishop e7, castle, White ca uh, black castle, e5 push, um, knight f8, bishop takes e7, king takes e7, and then knight e5, and the king goes back on d8. Um, the queen is gonna be wrong if the queen goes on d6 because again there's uh sorry it's not there's a knight on e8. I'm sorry. So here, okay, queen d6 maybe is a good move, but yeah, I forgot that there's a knight on e8 already. So here, um. He could just capture and then bishop goes here and then group goes on e1. Normal. Uh, what happened here is after queen d8, he captures d6 and he has to capture with the pawn. Why? If he captures, for example, using the knight, uh, here there's a very simple rule. I mean, it's a very simple tactic. Knight takes c7. Removing the guard and the knight is hanging on on d6. So after queen takes, 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 and white is up by a pawn. So after e takes d6, he has to capture with a pawn. Bishop on d3, bishop on e6, knight on f4, knight on f6, and then rook h e1. So from the start of the game, you should know what will you do in your group. And on this game, white manages to develop his rook by putting it on the, this is the open file because there's no pawn. And this is a semi-open file because there's one. Next, queen development. Now, can we develop the queen early part of the game? Then the answer is yes. Uh, all beginners or starters know this. The attack on f7. So, for example, e4, e5, bishop on c4, knight on c6, and then queen h5. So, uh, it's not really a good idea to put your queen out early in the game because, again, you have to develop your knight, your bishop, your knight, and then castle. But putting out your uh, queen early in the Early in the game, it's just you're hoping for your opponent to blunder. So, for example, here, 
if black played bishop on c5 and then there's a checkmate on f7 if for example he played knight on f6 still check uh checkmate on uh f7 so but the problem is what if black played for example the best move g6 and then queen f sorry queen f3 still not giving up on the checkmate on f6 just me uh not giving up the checkmate on f7 and then after knight on f6 and then now it's the only time for you to develop your knight and and after black you just play bishop on g7 as you can see um a lot of development for black has been done and i think here black manages to make his goal to, to equalize in the opening uh he can castle and oh okay why can castle but after b6, all almost of black's pieces are working. So, putting out your queen early in the game is not really uh, a good idea, but just to enjoy the game, then it's fine. Um, here is a very uh, long game played by Hikaru Nakamura, if you know him, from USA, against Sari Krishna, uh, Krishna, sorry. And e4, e5, queen h5. So he just developed his queen early in the game, but after knight on c6, bishop on c4, and, and g6, queen f3, knight f6, knight e2, bishop g7, uh, knight c3, c d6, d3, uh, bishop on g4, and then how many times do you have to move your queen? So we have one, two, and then you have to move your queen again. Queen g3, and then Queen d7 and then f3 attacking this bishop just to regroup. Okay, bishop on g5 and after this move, knight on h5. Again, you have to move your queen. How many times do you have to move the queen h6 and then move the bishop again? Then here, okay, uh, this game ended with Hikaru losing the game. But I'm just trying to show you that if you move your queen out early in the game, like this. If you move your queen early out in the game, believe me, this queen will be a shooting target. And Black's gonna, uh, I mean, Black's idea will be all about developing his piece while attacking your queen. So if you can avoid uh, developing your queen early in the game, try to avoid it and try to focus developing your pieces and castle. Put your rook on the center and let the middle game go uh the positioning or your developed pieces okay uh let's see this one d4 knight of six d4 d5 knight on c3 e6 bishop on g5 knight bd7 knight on f3 okay good c6 and then here white play knight e5 um black here, we just simply capture. But the problem with capture is, uh, okay, he takes e5, and then he can play h6. So I have some games like this when I was uh, a beginner. And I learned that after bishop on h4, white is trying to keep uh, the pin in f6, and black can just play g5. So now, okay, the trick is gone. Uh, black didn't blunder and after bishop on g3 and the knight on h5 white will have a hang upon it and, uh, the bishop on g3 is going to be exchanged or captured by the knight so here uh black just played a very cool motive called the queen a5 motive queen e5 is uh very common if there's love player it's like you see this or hanging pieces like uh, a horizontal x-ray and here he played um, e3 closing up this bishop so this bishop could be active and after knight on e4 this is the problem for but the problem is the bishop is hanging and Knight now is attacking this uh, knight on c3 because it's being pinned. So if bishop goes on h4, or even if you play h4, but I think bishop h4 is 
better move. Knight takes c3, and then after pawn takes c3, queen takes, blacks, uh, I mean, white's gonna lose a piece here. So, for example, if you play queen d2, then there's a free rook, so probably he will play uh, king e2, right? So after king e2, then yeah, there's queen b2, and okay, it's it's so much damage that black can do with just a queen. Or I think what about if um okay knight on e4, bishop h4, and okay, black can also capture this knight for some e5. So if pawn takes, then takes on c3. C takes and then queen takes check, and there is this problem. After queen, a uh, king on e2 and then queen c4 is a double attack. So moving your queen into a very nice motif is also a very good thing. I I will teach you that maybe later on, but now for now we'll just focus on how important developing your queen is okay, um okay that's it so i hope you guys understand a little, uh, just a little for developing your pieces um again golden rule in chest control the center develop your piece towards the center and then for example you can castle and, and put your groups on the center. So I'll be continuing our lesson again next week. So you guys have a great day and stay safe. Bye.